pleasure to know you. And it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My bishop. I call him the Oga at the top. Amen. <laughs> Isn't it a privilege to be in the presence of God? It's a great privilege to be here this morning. And I'm so excited to meet with you. I know this is that God bless you. It's um, another wonderful opportunity uh, to meet with each and every one of you. God has been so good. It's been the grace of God. It's been the power of His promised word. It's been the blessings of the Lord that has kept you where you are today. It's, it's been the same blessings of the Lord that has sustained us with His power. It's been the blessings of the Lord that made us who we are by the special grace of God. So this morning, uh, without taking much of your time, I want us to explore something that I believe. And something that I'm certain that it can change your life. Each time a child of God obeys the word of God, God follows his blessing. Praise the Lord. So this morning I want us to explore something that has worked for me and something that I'm certain uh, is going to work to for each and every one of you by the special grace of God. At uh, this month in my church, we've been on the theme of showers of blessing. Uh, because the blessings of the Lord is real. It's something that can happen to you. And when it comes to you, it changes your life from the inside and the outside. Uh, so this morning, I bring that same blessing to the church of God. Uh, but before we go into that, I want us to sing quickly uh, the first stanza of that song that says, There shall be showers of blessing. Praise the Lord. And if you believe that there shall be showers of blessings in your life, I just want you to begin to automate something in your life as you sing along uh, with me. Verse 2 
one else, then the Lord said to Elijah, go to the east. Say to somebody, go to the east. He said, go to the east. And I want you to underscore the word east in that verse. He said, go to the east and hide by carriage brook near where it enters the Jordan River. Verse 4. He said, drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you, uh, for I have commanded them to bring you food. I want you to underscore the word, commanded to bring you food. And that's why so Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped beside Kerit Brook, east of Jordan. You see, there's another east there. So I want you to underscore that because I'm going to get to that in a minute. So he hid in the east of the Jordan River. Now the ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. But after a while, the brook dried up, for there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. And verse 8, then the Lord said to Elijah, go, said to somebody, go. He said, go and live in the village of Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, would you please bring me a little water in a cup? And as she was going for Gary, he called to her and said, hey, bring me also a bite of bread too. Verse 12. But she, she said, I swear uh, by the Lord your God uh, that I don't have a single piece of bread in this house, and I have only a handful of flour left in the jar, and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jar. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal, and then my son and I will die. The kitters first time in. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Look at somebody this one. I said, don't be afraid. He said, don't be afraid. Go ahead and just do what you say. Uh, however, uh, make me a little bread first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. You know the entire account of what happened in this great story. So you begin to understand that uh, there's something that happens to the child of God when the believer begins to respond to the direction of God's blessing. There are so many people in the scriptures that have responded to the direction of God's blessing and we've seen how God decided to design their life, to custom make their life, to take them to the next level, where their needs are met, where they are not in, uh, where they, 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 they are not in stagnant positions where something just begins to happen in their life. So this was something that was beginning to happen in the life of the man of God. So how does a child of God respond uh, to the direction of blessing, the direction of God's blessing? And that, that, that's a question that keeps bothering my mind. Because oftentimes I've seen people who miss the mark. I've seen people who miss their blessing because of the way uh, they responded when the blessing came. I've seen people who would have been something powerful, who would have been people in position, in authority, who would have been shakers and makers of things in this world. Uh, but somehow screw the blessing because of the way they responded to the blessing. And something that is unique about God is that God will never run out of resources. God will always have something. I don't know what you're going through now. There may be issues in your life. There may be circumstances in your life. See, I'm here to tell you that I have faced all of those. The good news is that we have a God who has successfully been able to specialize in meeting us even where it appears there is no end in sight in the direction uh, that the enemy has subjected us. Elijah, uh, the man of God, was in this situation. But what made a big difference in his life was the way he responded at a time when it appears that there was no hope in sight. So the first take-home point for you today, out of the four that I have designed for you uh, to bless your life, to uh, something that has worked for me, and something that I believe will work some of you, uh, is the first point that I have here today is that before a child of God uh, can successfully secure the blessings of the Lord, uh, the child of God must be willing to harness the power of their belief. Look at your neighbor this one and say, harness the power of your belief. See, I tell
tell you it is your belief that makes you who you are. It is your belief that sustains your life. It is your belief that provides you direction. It is your belief that validates your values. It is your belief that programs your life. It is your belief that programs your life. I see many people who believe in failure and somehow failure works for them. But also, I've also seen too much people who believe in success and at the fullness of time, they work towards success since success is a procedural journey and somehow they cut the blessing. The good news is that by the special grace of God, as some of you have been led to Atlanta University, maybe it's not the best place you had dreamed to be, maybe it's not where you had wanted to go, uh, but somehow you are here because the Lord has ordered your footsteps in this place. So the good news is that there are blessings, there are abundant blessings on this campus. There are powerful things that can begin to happen to you as a believer, as a child of God, even from this campus. But what's going to make a huge difference is the way you responded to the direction of your blessing. This morning I bring you good news that there are abundant blessings. A songwriter begins to sing and he said, mercy begins to drop us, round us. He said that they are falling because there are showers of blessing. Praise the Lord. So you have to harness, say to somebody, the power of your belief. When you harness the power of your belief, actions are taken. Because it is your belief that speaks about your vision. It is your belief that speaks about your direction. It is your belief that speaks about your purpose. If you want to know how somebody is going to be in the next five to ten years, you begin to look at what are they believing about themselves today? What are they believing about their life? What are they saying about their life? You see people who believe in failure, somehow they begin to call failure into their heart. And we also see people who believe in victory and somehow victory work for them because they believe so strongly in victory. They want to make victory in their life. They declare victory in their life and somehow God begins to move. Elijah was in this situation where it appeared there was no hope for him in sight. But thanks be to God because he was very convinced in his belief system that God Beyond and above whatever you have imagined, so that God came for him even when the broke right up. So your, your vision is about what you believe. Your vision is about your purpose. Uh, your vision is about your direction. Yeah, your vision is what becomes of you. Uh, that's how we say even when the man of God was in California, it becomes something that is always in our tongue that what you don't believe, you don't become. It is what you believe as a child of God that you become. I don't know some of you, I don't know what is your goal in life. I don't know what are your short-term goals, your long-term goals, but I can tell you authoritatively that I used to be where you are today. But somehow I believe in the power of God's promised word that there is nothing that can, that can put the child of God to be in a position where the child of God is stranded, where the child of God had no way of escape. The good news is that God has always come forth for the children of God whenever they believe. So your belief is something that you need to begin to uh, think about deeply. I don't know what you believe about your life. Today you are an undergraduate. Tomorrow you are a graduate. It is how you begin to work things out even now that will shape the life you are going to live in the next few years and in the next few days. Elijah was in this situation but he harnessed the power of his belief which takes me to my second point your take home this afternoon, that for a child of God to respond successfully and to the direction of God's blessing, and that child of God must be able to reconcile that there are actions that must be taken. But the good news is that a child of God can decide to take deliberate action. Look at your neighbor and say, take deliberate actions. That's your second point for your take home this morning. You first harness the power of your belief, praise the Lord, because your belief can begin to do something powerful. It can begin to work for you. I've seen so many folks who could not harness the power of their belief and somehow they were subjected into failure and mediocrity. The good news this morning is that a child of God who wants to get to the direction of God's blessing must be willing to take somebody say deliberate actions. Someone will define faith as a connection with God that comes from knowing his power and resting on his promises to act on our behalf. The good news is that when a child of God takes deliberate actions, and when a child of God uh, decides to automate their mind into the power of God's promise and begin to believe big that there is no 
nothing that's impossible with a man of Judah. That there is nothing that can topple God. And the child of God begins to believe that the blessings of God, that there are so many showers of blessings, there are so many opportunities. And that child of God begins to harness the power of their belief system. And that child of God moves to the phase where they begin to take deliberate actions. For some of you, you might think you're just an undergraduate. But I'm telling you that some of us, what has worked for us today? What makes us who we are today is the steps we take yesterday, praise the Lord. So it doesn't matter where you are, how you might think you're a student. What matters right now is that you get your degree. Yes, I agree with you, but there is more to getting your degree to get into the place of success. You have to harness the power of your belief. You have to take some deliberate measures. You have to take some actions, deliberate actions. It could be the actions of programming your mind into success. I see people who program their mind into faith and somehow it worked for them. But I don't see them in this church today, praise the Lord. I'm seeing people, I'm seeing, I'm seeing millionaires in this church, I'm seeing great people in this church, I'm seeing people that will be shakers and makers of this nation in this church, I'm seeing people that can shape this nation, I'm seeing all class at the top in this church, I'm seeing people that will shape politics in this church, I'm seeing people that will end Boko Haram in this church, I'm seeing people, oh church, I'm just seeing four in, in, in Atlanta University who can believe in themselves that with God, impossibility has become nothing. I see them sitting all around me, but they have to take deliberate actions, praise the Lord, before they get to those places. The deliberate action you might be taking today might be to take your studies very seriously. I know that there is more to life than form, praise the Lord. Because life uh, will not treat you uh, easily. Life is not fair all the time. You know, they tell us here uh, that knowledge is power. Uh, but what they fail to tell us also is that that is just the half truth. Uh, the full truth is that knowledge is power when we put it to good use, praise the Lord. So some of you are here today getting your educations. There is more. Uh, to get in your educations when you want to respond to big blessings. See, there are blessings. You are nicely seated this, you are nicely seated in this audience this morning, looking all that cute and smiling, and everybody is happy. Uh, by the special grace of God, some of you are here because you have paid your school fees, or because your parents have paid your school fees. That's a blessing there. But the blessing I'm talking about is the blessing that shatters the record. The blessing that takes you to the top. It's a blessing that defines mediocrity. It's a blessing that leads you to a place of excellence. It's a blessing that puts you on record. And you see a college kid like Max Zuckerberg in 2004, and someone that you're very familiar with, someone that nobody even wanted to give uh, serious attention, and someone that just uh, began to do something in his, in his hostel, a college kid, I believe he was 21 years old, And some of you might find this a little offensive. He doesn't have a degree to his name. I'm not saying don't study, but there is more to uh, going to your place of blessing when you respond well by taking deliberate actions. Praise the Lord. I believe that Mark Zuckerberg took a deliberate action that has put him where he is. Honestly, if I would have loved that he completed that education, but there is more uh, to Western education. The education I'm talking about. Is the one that captures your mind. Is the one that makes you to become entrepreneur, to become more useful than just reading anatomy 101 or chemistry 104 or sociology 101. There is more that happens to the child of God if you want to reap the blessings that God has deposited on this earth. The good news is that you can harness the power of your belief by taking deliberate actions and by the special grace of God there will be an upgrade. Send to somebody upgrade. When you take deliberate actions that are upgrade, that are visible or visible in your life. That takes me to the next point. The third point before the last point this morning is that for the child of God, just like Elijah who hid by the brook, by, by the carrot, uh, even when the rabbits were bringing him food, obviously Elijah had become comfortable. Uh, but one thing I see is that whenever God wants to take you to the next level, he moves you out of 
your comfort zone. Praise the Lord. Elijah was in that situation where he had become comfortable. The Reverend bring him morning his breakfast. In the evening, they brought him dinner. Somehow he was good. He felt everything was okay. But somehow, praise God, God wanted to take him to shoot him off, to promote him, to take him to new heights and that he never before had imagined God allowed the brook to dry up. of blessing. So, a child of God who wants to uh, locate his blessing must be intentional. Praise the Lord. That's the whole point. You have to be intentional and avoid distraction. Look at your neighbor and say intentional, intentional. and avoid distraction. <laughs> Elijah did not allow hunger. <laughs> there are some people who allow hunger to do a lot of things in their life. There are some people who allow hunger to make them to cheat. There are some people who allow hunger to make them to fornicate. There are some people who have allowed hunger to ridicule them and disgrace them. Elijah will not allow hunger to put him in that stuff, in that situation because first he had the power of his belief in God. Secondly, he took deliberate actions and, and thirdly, he was intentional and he avoided every form of distraction. The good news is that God decided to deposit something in the life of Elijah that made him to successfully locate this widow of Zarephath at the gate. Praise the Lord. So the good news is that every time a child of God avoids distraction and is intentional in his pursuit, that child of God is always going to be successful in getting to their place of victory by securing the blessing that God has deposited on your part. But you have to be focused, praise the Lord. You have to be focused. A focused child of God is unstoppable, praise the Lord. A focused child of God uh, is designed for victory. A focused child of God is designed to eat the fruit of the land. I see a lot of people, who jokers, who just felt that there is, uh, life is about fun. And I tell you the truth, you don't just take life easy. Don't take life easy. Look at the neighbor and say, don't take life easy. Maybe our problem in Nigeria is because we take life easy too much. You know, there is God who, and all kinds of things. Even when we need to take deliberate action, we make jokes out of them and all kind of chai. There is, you know, take life. Life cannot treat you uh, with ease. You have to take life serious, praise the Lord. A focused child of God who wants to become the guy at the top, who wants to reap the blessings of God, the limitless blessings of God, must be what? Focused. When you are intentional and avoid distraction, the good news is that you'll be focused. You see, why must a child of God be focused to reap their blessing? Is that for a focus is like the fuel and the fullness of achievement. It is when you are focused that you become unstoppable. And it is when you are focused that your focus will become your goalkeeper. It is like some of us that like soccer. Just imagine what happens when there is no goalkeeper in the post. It's, it's, it's crazy, right? That's what happens to the child of God when you don't have a focus. But by the special grace of God, I am seeing focused visionaries in this church. I see people in Adelaide that will topple what we know in education. I see people that will engineer Nigeria. I see people that become shakers and makers of this nation, even from this audience today, and reap the bountiful blessings of God. But it depends on how you respond to the direction of God's blessing. Praise the Lord. So take life serious. Don't take life easy. Elijah could have said, you know, God, this is not what we began. Elijah could have quit and said, God, you know what, <laughs> I quit. When the brook dried up, Elijah could have said, God, you have brought me this path to disgrace me. Elijah could have had one stupid complaint or something going on in his mind. But the good news is that the man of God was very focused. And he reaped a bountiful of God's blessing because he was very focused. Any wonder, the songwriter Isaac what in his song, The Lord, Lord, in the morning thou shalt hear. And the last stanza of that song, he said uh, that the men that love and fear thy name shall see their hosts fulfilled. Praise the Lord. He said they will see their hosts fulfilled for the mighty God will compass them uh, with favor as they share. Praise the Lord. A child of God who is focused, who is intentional, who have harnessed the power of their belief, who has become unstoppable, will always know how to praise the Lord. Elijah began to praise the Lord in advance. Elijah began to believe in his success. Elijah didn't complain and say, God, you know, somebody like Dr. John will say, God, don't you know what the press will do? You're sending me to Zarephath, to the house of a widow? Come on! Are you sure this is the voice of God? But Elijah had no hesitation. 
visitation. Elijah moved to the house of this woman and literally lived there uh, because he harnessed the power of his belief in the God of impossibilities. Even when doubt could have crept into his mind, he believed big time in the God of big miracles, in the God of big favors, in the God of big promotions, in the God that can design your life, in the God direct your life and the God that can change your past and the God that knows how to disgrace failure Elijah automated his mind into success at that point and God pushed him to the finishing line where he successfully was able to be a blessing to the Zarephath widow, to his child to her child and perhaps to the nation uh, that God has sent him but there was something that was leading him which takes me to the fourth point this morning as I close which is that each time a child of God has the power of their belief, each time a child of God, I don't know your situation today, believe big time that God can do exceedingly what you have ever imagined. Each time God try to put God into test and take deliberate action, each time a child of God avoid distractions and is very focused, what happens is that a child of God will always receive God's blessing, praise the Lord. And the blessings of God is a favor. It's not something that you can, uh, the amount of work you put can deliver to you. It's something that comes to you like a favor. And what the songwriter Isaac Watt was beginning to say is that the men that love and fear thy name shall see their host what fulfilled. For the mighty God will come past them uh, with favor as like a shield. When God comes past you with favor uh, like a shield, you are not stranded. When God comes past you uh, with favor like a shield, you are prosperous. When God pros uh, compasses you uh, with favor as a shield, what happens is you operate on a higher path. When God compasses the child of God uh, with favor like a shield, what happens is that you begin to uh, sing. Uh, another songwriter said that I serve a risen Savior. He lives in the world today. I know that he is living uh, because I am walking now with him and I am doing what? Talking now with him. So the good news is that some of you here may need something beyond the physical uh, education you are receiving today. Just believe that with God, I have become unstoppable. In God, impossibility has become nothing for me. So they receive, the widow of Zarephath received God's blessing. Elijah received God's blessing. The child of the widow received God's blessing. And finally, why did all these people receive God's blessing? And now that takes me to that last point, which is that they each received God's blessing. You see, the thing is that a compass is like a navigational instrument that shows the direction. I told you when I was reading this to mark your Bible where it said, go to the east. And I said I was going to get to that. So if I don't get to that, I have, I have lied on the pulpit. And I also considered my time. But let me just put it this way, that a compass is a navigational instrument that shows the direction in a frame, in a, in a frame of reference uh, that is stationary to the surface of the earth. It is this reference that defines what we now know as the north, the south, the east, and the west. In other words, a compass is your navigational instrument to your place of God's blessing as a believer. Praise the Lord. It is this compass of favor that encapsulates the child of God that navigates you step by step. It's like a GPS. What made Elijah locate the widow of Zephyr? You think it was just a coincidence that God has decided to install the compass of his favor, of his prosperity, of his blessing in the mind and in the life of Elijah. And so what happens in returns is that Elijah was, be, was able, uh, by the special grace of God, uh, to be navigated to his place of victory. So, uh, some of you are in a tight situation today where you may not know what may happen tomorrow, but the good news of the promised word of God is that there is hope for each and every one of us. And if we can believe big time in this God, who is bigger than our current problems and greater than our setbacks, the good news is that we will be able to have the hope 
that give the faith the job to believe in drafting that business contract, even while a student. I tell you the truth, my wife and I successfully ran two businesses while we were still students, while we were still pursuing an undergraduate degrees. We successfully ran these businesses. So when we got to America, it has become a part of our life to set up businesses, praise the Lord, because God has now installed in us the GPS that it doesn't matter where we go, uh, because the GPS that God has encompassed us has a favor in it. It means that wherever we are stationed, we can begin to locate our blessings. So when we go to America, the same God that defies geography installed a GPS for us, and he said, you cannot settle here. He said, you cannot stop here, uh, because there is much blessing for you. I don't know some of you who are in this situation, who are believing God big time, that in God, the possibility is nothing, there is hope. And the good news this morning is that you can receive God's blessings, but you have to first believe, by harnessing the power of your belief, you have to take deliberate actions and avoid distraction, you have to be focused and you receive the God's blessing that God has positioned in your life. If such people are in this church today who want to prosper and go to their place of victory, I invite you to stand with me as we sing that song one more time and as we grow that the eyes shall be showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy cross round us and fall in for the shower.